For a couple weeks ago, I made a video where I gave tips on making 2D games with Unity. Since you guys really loved that video and wanted more, which by the way, thank you so much for the support on that, I decided to make one for making FPS games too. So for this video, I've collected a bunch of tips, tricks, and features you should know of when making an FPS game in Unity. Also, if you missed, I just want to mention that we're running a community game jam with other cool creators on YouTube the last week of August. I'll talk more about this at the end of the video and I will link the jam page in the description, so make sure to check it out and stay tuned. And before we get started, this video is brought to you by Monday.com. Monday.com is a tool that simplifies the way teams work together. You can manage workload, track projects, move work forward, and communicate with people. You can create boards in order to track everything your team is working on. And what's really cool about Monday.com is that you can figure out what view works best for you and choose to work with it, ranging from calendar, chart, and files views, all the way to Kanban, map, and timeline views. Monday.com integrates your favorite tools to centralize your data in one place. You can then pick a template for your work and customize it to fit your needs. So make sure to check out monday.com through the link in the description. Alright, so with that being said, open up Unity and let's learn some new and cool stuff. So the first trick I'm going to share is about using the asset store. And now I know the asset store, when some people hear about it, they go asset flip. But this really depends and this is why I want to talk about it. I personally use the asset store to simply avoid reinventing the wheel for some of the features that I'm going to make for my game. If I'm not making a super luxurious inventory system very specific for my game, I don't think there is a reason to build one myself. I can grab something either for free or really cheap price from the asset store and literally purchase myself some time in return. When using the asset store, I think it's really important to ask yourself, should I do this myself or do I want to buy myself the time I save from not making this by myself? If it's your game's main feature we're talking about, maybe you do want to spend more time on making it, but if it's a really quick AI car driving system you need, I think you can get something off of the asset store and modify it to fit your needs. And you might be wondering why are you talking about asset store when it's about making an FPS game? Well, because there are so many valuable things with the asset store, like getting the animation packages, getting some characters, weapons, and 3D models, 2D sprites, whatever you need, you can pretty much find it there because it's a huge marketplace for Unity specifically. So my point is, don't try reinventing the wheel for literally everything you have to do for your game. Like you don't have to make it for yourself, you can get some 3D models, you can get some sprites or you know sound effects, visual effects, so you should just feel free to check it out. And I'm responding to this and bringing this up in my video because I've been getting a lot of questions recently about using the asset store and if there are like any cons with it. So I just wanted to pretty much respond to those questions. And now let's move on. So at number two, I want to share something about actually making an FPS game specifically. Grenades and other explosion shockwaves are actually incredibly easy to do in Unity, whereas most people often think it's a hard task. And I actually have a full tutorial video for this on the channel, which I will link in the description below. But to give you the gist of it, let me explain. There is a function that's part of the rigid body component called add explosion force. Using this function, you can add force on colliders around the center of the explosion, generating the typical explosion shockwave effect most FPS games use. Once again, if you want to check out the full tutorial for this, it's in the link in the description. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> it's linked in the description. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and next up, tip number three, animations are a big part of any game, but especially FPS games. In FPS games, the thing that players see the most of the time is the weapon equipped. So having realistic animations for the arms, the hands, and the weapon is really important. For this reason, you can create the animation in Unity through the animation window, which you can find by going to window, and enter animation. And if your game is going to support multiple characters or multiple different arms like skins and stuff like that, it's also very important for you to have a reusability system in place for reusing the animations instead of making them over and over again for each character. And the avatar system is how Unity identifies that a particular animated model is humanoid in layout and which parts of the model correspond to the legs, arms, head, and body. Because of the similarity in bone structure between different humanoid characters, it is possible to map animations 
from one humanoid character to another, allowing retargeting and inverse kinematics. If this to you sounds like absolute gibberish, <laughs> don't worry about it. Because if you want to read more about this, I will leave some useful links in the description. But these are some things you should definitely keep in mind when working on animations. Oh, but Saiku, you never link anything in the description. But I do, check it. All jokes aside, I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I've been forgetting quite a bit lately, but I'm getting better. Anyway, speaking of animations, let's also talk about making cinematics with Unity. Now, cinematics are often used to do cinematic shortcuts, scene transitions, and even trailers for games. So for this reason, Unity has a tool called Timeline. Timeline can be used for creating cinematics with a very easy workflow. However, it can also be used to creating dynamic events in-game. So you can basically add signals, which is a new feature that they added this year, that will let you detect if certain requirements are met, which you can then tell Unity what to do if they are met. Since Timeline is quite a big feature, I won't be spending too much time on it in this video, but I will simply guide you to the right place if you want to learn more about it through the links in the description, and I will have links for creating cinematics, creating trailers, or making dynamic events in Unity, because I'm a nice guy like that and I want to help you make games, and you should definitely subscribe to the channel. Moving on to number 5, this trick is kind of more general for any game really, but since a lot of new indie developers do miss out on this, I wanted to share it. So you can create a game manager component to control everything happening in your game instead of controlling 50 different tasks from 30 scripts. I'm obviously exaggerating the numbers a little bit, but I've seen a lot of people trying to do one thing from a script which can be less performant in some cases. Having a game manager where you control AI spawn, game conditions, and many other features and core mechanics of your game will make it easier to handle bugs, errors, and manage the game rules in one place in general. And for number 6, we spoke a little bit about managing AI, but not really about creating it and how to make it happen. There is a feature in Unity called NavMesh, which allows you to add agents, in quote marks, basically AI that can stroll through your map. Using NavMesh, you can define where the AI can or cannot walk, place obstacles that the AI has to move around, and so much more. And NavMesh is actually quite simple to use, so I'm gonna give you a single link in the description to my tutorial video on it, which will teach you everything you need to know about making self-controlled AI that can walk around obstacles in Unity and be smart enough to not run into walls. So at number 7, I just want to talk a little bit about multiplayer, which is a big topic when it comes to making FPS games. And right now, multiplayer is a little bit tricky in Unity. Basically, there is a solution called Unit, which is the set of tools that Unity has for us to make multiplayer games. However, Unit is being deprecated, so they're working on a new method now called the Connected Game Stack. There are parts of Connected Games out right now, but it's not production ready. If you want to learn exactly what you should do if you're making or thinking of making a multiplayer game with Unity right now, I will link my full guide in the description so you can see what your options are. I will also include some links in the description to the official blog posts from Unity themselves about multiplayer, so if you want to read more about that, I definitely strongly suggest you to do so. But as of right now, if you're making a game that's supposed to be released very soon, like before the end of this year, I would say, then you can most likely use Unit. Otherwise, it's probably wiser to wait for the new system to kick in. And now finally, moving on to number 8, if you're making your game for desktop and consoles, you should definitely consider using HDRP or the High Definition Render Pipeline. HDRP is a template for the scriptable render pipeline in Unity, which opens up new possibilities for rendering. HDRP is the one that's recommended for games that strive to reach high fidelity graphics running on higher end consoles and PC. Subsurface scattering is an example of many new options and features HDRP introduces which adds to the photorealism of your game by allowing light to travel through some materials. An example of this is if you hold a flashlight behind your finger, you will see that the light travels through your skin and makes your finger almost glow. Don't worry, it won't melt. <laughs> I hate myself. Ending the video with a very bad pun. I know, that's typical Saiku for you. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. <laughs> Welcome to the community. You're now a part of the family. Oh, great. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, so that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to make this quick 10 minute long or ish video where I basically share some tips and tricks for making FPS games with Unity. Now, obviously, if you have any questions or if you feel like this video wasn't very, very much of what you were expecting or if you have any feedback, please do let me know because the, the last video we did for 2D games, for making 2D games, was very well received by you guys. So I want to continue that consistency of high quality content so if you have any feedback like i said i'm all ears for those of you who are not a part of the poly realm discord squad which is the coolest discord squad for game development out there you should join duh <laughs> so i'm gonna link it in the description if you guys want to join we basically have over 14,000 game developers right now who are all like-minded people who love to chat meme talk about youtube talk about game development talk about unity um share resources you know what i mean like talk about anything pretty much so if you want to join once again the link is in the description to that now, if you guys like this video and want to see more, make sure to give it a like and hit subscribe to stay up to tune for new content. And I also told you in the intro that I have a very exciting announcement to make about the Game Jam. So we are hosting a Community Game Jam, which is a massive Game Jam event that will take place over a week at the end of August. The best and most fun about this is that it's not just our community, but we're hosting this with Brackies, Danny, Jabrils, and Blackthorn Prod. So we're working really hard on making this as much of a community event as possible in order to make sure that we're inviting as many cool developers and creative people as possible. We're all gonna show our process of working on our entries after the jam, and I'm extremely excited to see what you guys cook up within a week. And the best part is that it doesn't matter if you're new to game development, intermediate, or have or have not participated in jams before, it truly doesn't matter because we encourage everyone to join regardless, as this is a community event, which makes you the main highlight. So make sure to go to the link in the description and join the jam and stay tuned for the theme. You can also work in a team if you want to. So you can build a team through our Discord server, for example. And did I mention that we have a Discord server? Yeah, we do. But yeah, it's going to be a really cool event that we're going to host with a bunch of different cool people. And you guys are cool too, so you should join. So I don't know why, but I'm really awkward today. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. So I will see you in the comment section and in our Discord server. Thanks for watching.